You know, when you think about climate change, maybe you picture melting ice caps, uh, rising sea levels. The standard images, yeah. But what if I told you there's this, this really crucial climate mystery playing out right now deep in the Pacific Ocean? And it's one that could seriously affect the weather where you live. Especially if you happen to be on the U.S. West Coast. It's quite fascinating. It really is. What's kind of baffling for you, know, for you to understand is that while most of the ocean is warming up, just like we expect, right. There's this patch, this stubborn cold spot in the eastern tropical Pacific. Scientists call it the cold tongue. The cold tongue. And the that... weird part, it's actually been getting colder. Colder? But everything else is warming. That that seems completely backwards. It is. It totally goes against what almost all the climate models have been telling us should happen there. Wow. So, okay, give us some numbers. How much colder? Well, over the last, say, four decades or so, the western Pacific already warm. It's heated up by about maybe one degree Celsius, pretty much in line with global warming. Okay. Makes sense. But this cold tongue area in the east, it's cooled by about half a degree Celsius. Half a degree cooler versus one degree warmer. So that's a degree and a half difference across the Pacific. Exactly. And while that might not sound like a huge number on its own, over that vast an area of ocean, it's a really big deal. It has these massive knock-on effects. Which can impact all of us, you're yeah, saying. Definitely. If you're thinking about the direct consequences for you, this temperature split is already messing with rainfall patterns. Ah. And if you live, like you said, on the U.S. West Coast, particularly California, huh. you're already dealing with this, you know, this mega drought situation, long-term water stress. Yeah, that's been rough. So this weird cooling out in the Pacific. It could actually make things worse by shifting the storms, the very systems that bring the water you need. You mean the atmospheric rivers? Precisely. Those are absolutely vital. Think of them like huge rivers of moisture just flowing in the sky. Right. I've heard they provide something like, what, up to half the water for the West Coast? That's right. Up to half the annual supply in some areas. It's critical. So what's happening with them? Well, the data is showing they've been shifting, moving. Over the last 40 years or so, they've actually tracked... Um, somewhere between 400 and 700 miles further north towards the poles. 700 miles? That's yeah. that's a huge shift. That's like 6 to 10 degrees of latitude. It is. It's a significant displacement. So the big question for you listening is, if this keeps happening, if these rain bands keep moving north, what does it mean for places like Southern California or the Southwest? Areas already desperate for water. Yeah. Yeah. Could it be some kind of tipping point? It could certainly push things in a very difficult direction. More pressure on water supplies, agriculture, everything. And the core of it, the driver, seems to be this perplexing cooling tongue. It's genuinely one of the biggest unanswered questions in climate science right now. Okay, let's really dig into this cold tongue then. You said it's in the eastern tropical Pacific. Why is it normally cold there anyway? It's naturally cooler because of ocean currents. You get cold water welling up from the deep ocean there. That's normal. Okay. But the cooling trend is the surprise. That's the kicker. It's cooling down while the planet overall is heating up. And that 1.5 degree difference we talked about between the East and West Pacific, that's what's driving so much of this. And the models just don't see it coming? Nope. They generally predict that areas should be warming, maybe slower than other places, but definitely warming, not cooling. So what are the theories? Is it just a weird blip? A natural cycle we haven't figured out? Or is there some human fingerprint in that we haven't identified yet? That's the multi-million dollar question. Okay. To understand how this cold spot affects things so far away, like the West Coast rain, uh -huh. you mentioned something called the Walker circulation. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Crucial piece of the puzzle. For you listening, picture a giant atmospheric loop, a conveyor belt, basically, stretching right across the tropical Pacific. Okay. It's powered by that very temperature difference we keep mentioning. The cooler east in the much warmer west. So how does that work? Well, at the surface, you have the trade winds. They blow from east to west, dragging the warm surface water oh. towards, you know, Indonesia, the Philippines. Right. That pileup of warm, moist water means the air rises there, creates clouds, lots of rain, classic tropical rainfall. Makes sense. Then, way up high in the atmosphere, that now drier air flows back eastward across the Pacific, uh -huh. and eventually it sinks down over the cooler eastern Pacific where the air is denser. And that completes the circulation. Got it. So this whole engine is driven by the warm west and the cool east. Precisely. That temperature contrast is the engine. But wait, I thought, I thought the predictions were that global warming would actually weaken circulations like this. 
because the temperature differences might shrink. You're absolutely right. That was the initial thinking. As the whole planet warms, maybe that east-west difference wouldn't be as sharp, so the walker circulation should slow down. Uh, but what we're actually observing, especially over the last few decades, is the opposite. It seems to be getting stronger. Stronger. Despite warming, that's another counterintuitive thing. It is, and this unexpected strengthening, driven by that widening temperature gap, thanks to the cooling east, is having these major ripple effects. Color connections, they call them. Okay, so connect the dots for us. Stronger walker circulation. How does that push those atmospheric rivers north? Right. So stronger walker circulation means stronger trade winds at the surface. Okay. The east to west winds. Yeah. They push even more warm water to the western Pacific. This makes the rainfall over there even more intense. All that rising air basically acts like a... Well, one paper called it a hammer on the atmosphere. A hammer. It creates these persistent waves, these ripples in the atmosphere that spread out from the tropics. Think of them like standing waves. And these ripples reach mid-latitudes. Exactly. And the way this particular pattern sets up, it tends to nudge the jet stream, the high-altitude river of air that steers storms further north than it would normally be. Ah, uh, okay. So the steering currents for storms shift north. And if the jet stream moves north... The storms, including those vital atmospheric rivers bringing rain to California... They follow that northward track, meaning they might miss California, or at least the southern parts, more often. They end up hitting Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, maybe even further north. Wow, okay. So the impacts aren't just on the U.S. West Coast droughts, though? Oh, not at all. This has global consequences. Yeah. We're seeing some of these atmospheric rivers juiced up and pushed north, actually reaching all the way into the Arctic now. Into the Arctic? What happens when they get there? That doesn't sound good. It's, uh, it's not ideal, no. They bring pulses of warm, moist air. Sometimes it falls as rain, even in winter. Rain on snow and ice. Which would cause melting, obviously. Rapid melting, yeah. Plus, all that extra moisture increases the humidity in the Arctic atmosphere. And water vapor itself is a really powerful greenhouse gas. So it traps more heat, a feedback loop. Exactly. It amplifies the warming that's already happening like crazy up there. Which leads to more sea ice melt, darker ocean absorbing more sun, permafrost thawing, releasing methane. Accelerated Greenland ice sheet melt adding to sea level rise. And potentially even messing with major ocean currents like the AMOC, the Atlantic circulation. It's all interconnected. These changes in the Pacific trigger cascades elsewhere. It's a complex system. Let's bring it back to the immediate impacts for someone listening, maybe in California. Right. So for you, if you're in California, you rely on these atmospheric rivers for, like we said, maybe half your water. Yeah. The Southwest is already in the grip of this, you know, historic multi-decade drought, a mega drought. Yeah. We had some relief recently with big storms, didn't we? We did. Those big atmospheric river events brought some much-needed temporary relief, refilled some reservoirs. Mm -hmm. But the long-term trend that the data suggests is this overall northward shift. Meaning fewer of those storms hitting California reliably over time. That seems to be the risk, yes. Threatening an already incredibly fragile water supply for millions of people and, you know, a huge agricultural industry, especially in Northern California. And you mentioned this isn't just a northern hemisphere thing. No. Researchers are seeing similar kinds of shifts, mirroring effects in the southern hemisphere, too. It really underlines that the walker circulation is a truly global phenomenon. Changes there ripple outwards everywhere. So just to recap the core mystery for everyone listening, this cold tongue area in the eastern Pacific is cooling down. Right. Unexpectedly. This cooling increases the temperature difference across the Pacific, which seems to be strengthening the walker circulation. Also unexpected, based on earlier ideas. And that stronger circulation creates atmospheric ripples that push the jet stream and vital storm tracks, like atmospheric rivers, further towards the poles. Correct. Leading to potential drying in places like California and weird warming effects in the Arctic. But the absolute central puzzle is why the cold tongue is cooling in the first place. Exactly. Because the climate models our best tools for predicting the future, overwhelmingly say it should be warming up, just like the rest of the ocean. Initially, people thought maybe it's just natural variability, like a really strong La Nina phase, which naturally cools that area. That was the thinking for a while. Yeah. The Pacific does have these natural cycles, El Nino, La Nina, the Pacific Tequila Oscillation. Mm. They cause year-to-year -year fluctuations. Jeez. But this cooling trend in the east and the strengthening walker circulation, it's been going on for decades now. The atmospheric river shift is a 40-year trend. 
That seems like more than just a short-term natural blip. So the huge question remains, are the models fundamentally wrong? Are they missing some key piece of physics about how the ocean and atmosphere interact? That's one possibility. Maybe there's a process perhaps involving clouds or ocean mixing that isn't being captured correctly. Or is it still possible this is just a very long natural cycle that will eventually flip back? That's the other possibility. Maybe the Pacific just operates on longer time scales than we thought, and this trend will reverse. But if it isn't natural, if it turns out this cooling is somehow an unforeseen consequence of human emissions, the implications for future climate change seem massive. They really are. Getting this right is critical for knowing what to expect, especially regarding regional impacts like rainfall and drought. It really raises important questions about how well we actually understand the whole climate system. If the models are getting such a major feature of the Pacific wrong, what else might they be missing? It's a sobering thought. Mm. But scientists are working intensely on this, trying to figure out what piece is missing from the models. Is there any sense of when we might get clearer answers? There's some optimism, actually. Some researchers feel they might be getting closer to pinning down the cause, potentially identifying a stronger human role, maybe even within the next year or so. It's a very active area of research. Okay, so let's try and wrap this up for you, the listener. The big takeaway here is there's this major climate puzzle in the Pacific. Yeah, cold spot getting colder when it should be warming. And this isn't just some abstract scientific curiosity. It's actively changing global weather. It's strengthening tropical winds. And crucially, it's pushing those essential rain systems, the atmospheric rivers, further north. Away from regions like the U.S. West Coast that desperately need them. And our main tools for looking ahead, the climate models, they just don't capture this properly yet. It's a huge unknown. It's fascinating and maybe a little unsettling for you to consider how this one area of the Pacific Ocean can have such massive, far-reaching effects. From Arctic ice melt, you know, all the way to your water supply in California, potentially, it really hammers home how interconnected everything is in the Earth's climate. It really does. And it leaves you with a pretty provocative thought, doesn't it? If our understanding of the climate system has this significant blind spot right now, well, what other surprises might be waiting for us as the planet keeps changing in ways we maybe haven't fully anticipated yet? Hmm. It definitely underscores the complexity, the constant interplay between natural cycles, and increasingly, the undeniable human influence on our world. Something to keep thinking about.